Hello everyone, welcome back to episode Who's Even Counting of Hexen. Um, I have spent 20 minutes ish coming back to this particular spot, which now scares me so much I don't even step on the thing. What did occur to me is that we were actually given five discs of repulsion. Uh, when we. If you recall, when we found our second one of these, there were five discs of repulsion. Oh shit! Get down there. It's gonna hurt, but we're okay. Oh, I used one by accident. I want to have this. Um, or we could use our Minotaur. We could use our Minotaur. I mean, they're very rare, but this is a rare situation, I think. If ever, there, if ever there were a rare situation, I think this is it. I'm not sure if we can make this... Because you need to step back onto it to make it go down. But there's baddies up there. Now, you have to forgive me. I did save it just before this. I don't necessarily consider that save scumming because um, a save scum tends to imply that you are saving for its own sake. In this case, there are two reasons for saved. First of all, sometimes I have to quit Zandronum completely in order to get to Audacity and OBS. Oh, fudge. I porcolated myself. <laughs> so what happened there was I was trying to use the crystal vials and I must have accidentally switched to the porcolator, which I then fired at a centaur. See, th why can't they fight among themselves instead of me? Um, I must have accidentally scrolled. Anyway, the second reason for saving is that I am scared and this is hard, so suck it. Now we have full mana if we want it. That's going to hurt every single time. I think that actually goes down faster than gravity. So we can't just use it to bail, basically. We can possibly drain some HP from this. Okay, we did manage some. Okay. I'm not going to save it every single time we do a thing. What am I even doing? Press this. As you well know. Ooh, I wonder... Oh, I accidentally... Okay. I'm going to consider that scumming up slightly. But what I intended to do... Just put it on here. Did it go up? I don't know. I like that. <laughs> but at the same time, it is so extremely cheap. Right, it's still there, look. I was hoping that the flechette would go up. I didn't know that I could scum it up by just putting it here, but at the same time, that feels like a terrible idea. Um, I knew that I was going to have trouble with... Ah, oh, shit. Um, this bit, so I thought, you know, it's not necessarily safe. Oh, jeez. Save scumming if you are pretty sure that you're going to die a lot. As long as you save at the start of the difficult section and try and do it in one go, it's not really scumming it. In my opinion... That would be very nice if it was slightly easier. Oh, I keep falling off of this. Easier to select the one of these that I wanted. Right. Having succeeded, do I feel badly about saving it again? No. Because it would be very boring to continue to do that because this is also a very difficult part to get out of without dying in the other direction. There we go. So first of all... Okay. This is more of Hexen's unbelievably outrageous scripting engine. Honestly, I don't know if there's a way through here. You might just have to leg it. We did get given this. Yeah, that seems to do it. Right, one of these is the way out. That one. <laughs> the other two will teleport you back. Since we have Icon of the Defender on, Let's just bolt through the rest of this level and uh, use it to our advantage. Draining anything that can give us more HP as we go and hoping that we notice before it runs out. Another thing that you may or may not give two shits about. Um, it ran out already. That was very quick. Ah, is it the bone cube? Oh, yes. Oh, we got that separately. That, uh, that just keeps going, eh? Okay. 
we used to have a Hexen theme for Windows back at the time that whatever Windows was out when Hexen was out, I think it was 95, we'd use the uh, icon of the Defender as a thinking icon, you know, the hourglass icon, I believe. So that's cool. I say icon, I mean mouse pointers, of course. Why are you not taking a bunch of damage from this? It saddens me. So I don't know what the first key that we got is, because it's obviously a horsey key. Oh, hello. And that is a bone, and this is the bone key. I feel like I've missed a lot of this sort of series of worlds right here. Oh, series of worlds right here. Because I remember there being more than we found, but at the same time. That's not necessarily because I've done it wrong. It could just be because I chose a direction that I haven't chosen in the past to go first. We're going to have to visit everything. And I realised when I was um, playing through earlier, like getting back to the point to restart the episode, um, I think there are actually four worlds, at least, plus the hub in this particular one. Uh, there is also no dark mirror. The map actually has a name in the bottom left corner. I also forgot about that But it's pretty cool nonetheless Oh, <laughs> That worked before Yep, okay, I thought I'd try and scum it up and poison them things apparently my karma came back to bite me in the ass on that one I hope you all enjoyed the uh, show So we're gonna come back this way. I'm going to keep this out for now. Yeah, that's what we want. Nope, now I'm putting this in. Uh, okay. Pretty sure there are three types of these. <laughs> I've never actually noticed before. There's the uh, poison ones. There's the there's ones we started with, which just fire a, sort of a yellow ball of god knows what. Then there's the ones that fire a cloud of poison. There's the ones that fire a cloud of what appears to be fire. Oh, a switch. Now, it's a uh, very tropey, but this is a characterized switch, which means this is one part of the puzzle that you have to complete on this uh, hub world that you're doing. And six of the puzzle has been solved on the Shadow Wood. So it's called the Shadow Wood. Nothing behind there. We will save when we have zone anyway. I'm going to use one of these just because I'm scared. Uh, okay. But we do have... I think we picked up the swamp key, so we should check whether we can open the... Okay, so we want to go to the one behind us. Here. Keep going. That's interesting. See how there's a, a part of the wall here? It looks like it slid at some point. So maybe we opened that and didn't like, realise. And you can see that we could see right through this thing. There's a huge thing in the middle. That's probably just part of the engine. Or it could be a bug in this implementation. I'm not sure you're supposed to be able to see that, but we will find out soon enough anyway. Did we find this? Yes! So that was a uh, Dark Mirror. Pretty cool level. Very atmospheric with all the sounds. Oh! Another thing that was new in Hexen is that you could place... I think these are called... They're not called actors, but the, um, the sprites, the, the moving items that are enemies and collectibles. You could also place ones that just make noise. Or was it uh, maybe that you, your sector, when you draw the map, or the whole map just in general, can make noises, ambient sounds that don't actually have a source, which was new. Um, you could fake it in Doom. What you would do is you'd have enemies in the walls, and you'd have tiny little... Uh, we found it. <laughs> tiny little tubes sort of things that would cause the enemies to wake up, but they'd never be able to reach you. Uh, and through which you could hear them. But of course, all you could use was the sounds that enemies can make, which can be pretty scary, but they didn't actually do it in Doom, which is a shame. But there was a add-on to Doom, uh, a remapping, you know, um, you know, when you just take the engine and you replace all the maps and all the sounds and stuff for Alien. Where the whole of the first level just had no combat. You didn't see anything. Uh, nothing you could attack and nothing that would attack you. Oh, God, help. Um, this is actually bad times. Can you attack each other? That would be splendid. Splendid. 
which was a super atmospheric thing, and obviously, more recently, the actual Alien games have used very similar ideas, where just nothing happens, but it's still shit scary anyway. Oh, help. What are we going to do here? I might have to use my, um, my full mana thingy. Because there's no way I can beat this up with just this mace. At least not that many times. Hopefully we can find some mana, but I doubt it. What are we going to do here? If we're going to entice them to shoot each other, that would be great, but easier said than done, unfortunately. Found some HP. That would definitely help. <laughs> it doesn't really solve the immediate problem, which is that I can't actually get through this section. Oh, ow. Why do they not have to have... Oh, there's another one. Oh, shit. Run. <laughs> I'm going. I'm going. It's okay. I'm out. Man, this is a rough hood. What is this doing here? We found a second crystal chalice. So what I'm going to... Uh, Crater of Might. So I'm going to use it. I've got now full blue mana. I'm not going to use it on that Joker. I'm going to use it sparingly against these things until they die. That was not sparing. Try not to let any of... Not even half of them. Don't even let half of your split shots miss. Stop hitting the Ettins. They're easy. I discovered that I, I believe that the... Um, Stalkers that have been killing me so much. I actually have less HP than Etienne's. And Etienne's were the first things that we came across, so. There's a small mercy that the things that can pop up at random and hide invulnerably for the rest of the time. <laughs> actually, don't have that much HP, so you, you can take them out with this somewhat easily, but not. It's not, not, not recommended unless you're doing it from the shore, which is what I was doing because I was scared. I feel like we're doing okay, though, uh, he says, immediately taking damage from behind because he wasn't paying attention. Considering how massively overwhelmed we've been, I've only had to use a panic item basically once. We could porcolate these things as well. Honestly, what had originally been whimsical items like the porcolator and the banishment device and the chaos device have actually turned out to be extremely useful in hard mode because what was originally just something that you could use against an enemy if you chose to has suddenly become an invaluable asset that you can use when you easily run out of mana to oust many basically all things like flechettes and the porcolator and and, and and you know yada yada what have you anything that can attack an enemy when you don't have any mana it's turned out to be really useful for attacking enemies when you don't have any mana. Which happens all the time. It's like survival mode Fallout. This has actually turned out to be an extremely challenging uh, sort of resource management part of the game that never existed when we just played it in the old days on essentially easy mode. I don't really want to pick that up yet, but I do want to pull this and get myself. Please. 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 Fudge! Well, we solved two sixths in quick order. Uh, quick succession, so that, that pleases me. I will just zone because we save it. Okay, so now we're back here. I think what we're going to do now is figure out where the other... So this happened as well. This is another thing that doesn't... Like, uh, like one of those disbelief things. Why would this passageway exist? And why would this go down when I do whatever I do? Does that make sense as a question? Why would these things happen? What are they going for? Right, that's the cave key. So we still can't get any further in this area. But what we can do is go back up here. See what happens if we jump through this portal, which is... It's like someone's personal portal. This, by the way, I didn't push it. And when you get back over there, the switch that lowers the door bridge doesn't exist until you pull that. And this takes us back here. Okay. Well, I guess we'll go and have a look for the next zone. So that, as mentioned, that was my uh, favourite of the levels here. Now we've had Darkmere. We're in the Shadow Wood. We also got to the Caves of Despair, or whatever it was called. I was despairing. Um, so now we basically need to face this, which I believe is the Refectory. 
he says, inching his way through the levels, step by step. At some point, I'm hoping we are blessed with our next weapon, which I honestly don't know what it does. Um, very, uh, very frequent viewer, 42%, has helpfully pointed out to me that the final weapon is called Wraith Verge, which I knew somehow. I believe it was probably just in the, um, the manual, because back in those days, half the story would be in the manual for the game. Whereas these days, we put, uh, I don't know, we put the whole story in the game. Because we have the space to. I mean, I can hardly begrudge them for writing out most of the story in <laughs> prose in between chapters and other such tricks to reduce the amount of resources required, the amount of disk space required. But these days, who gives a toss? The whole game is the story, which is cool. <coughs> But it means that now, when you play these games, you don't have a whole story anymore. So I've, uh, burning through these quartz flasks quite quickly, but there are many of them. So, again, it's another resource management thing. You have to decide, should I use this quartz flask? There's no way you're getting through these without taking the damage that you're taking, especially playing as the cleric that I'm taking, anyway. I wish I didn't have to pick these up in an inefficient manner, but I guess it literally could be worse. It could be worse in a, in a in a much more important respect. There are plenty of them, and getting nine tenths of the value out of it seems better than accidentally getting one tenth of the value out. Of it. I'm trying to reduce my blue mana usage at all, if at all possible, as much as at all possible. Um, something teleported in. It's an etin. It's fine. You can also die. But there is some blue mana available, so I'm not hugely concerned. But at the same time. So this is cool. Alright. See these? These are the two switches that we've pulled. That happens across the map. Like, between levels. I know. It sounds lame. Of course it does. You do something in one level, it happens in the other level. Why would that be a big deal? It's a big deal, okay? Oh, shit. Get out. Can that set those off? Oh, shit. Uh, I don't think I can hit those through these windows, which is very annoying. So now we're going to have to make our way back through here. Without getting shot by this poison dart. We can help it. I can't even see it. When is it coming out? Oh, that one's on. <laughs> oh, health. Good. So this thing is now a death trap. Um, which is okay, if that's what you're into. Can you please stop firing in random directions? And this has changed. So now we can get in here. I think literally that just drops. This is actually a very interesting uh, piece of design work, because these steps, in a minute you'll see... But do bear in mind whilst we're seeing that, that everything is underneath everything else. Uh, everything is next to everything else. There is no vertical overlap in any of this. I wonder what that does. So we're going to jump down there, I guess. Fire. Oh! That's our weapon. Now green miner is useful. So let's have a look down here. So what's, they've completely reversed this step. And now there's a thing down here. This is very interesting design, but... Oh, I remember. It just literally sets them on fire. It probably doesn't work too much for a centaur, because... They have the... Ooh, yes, yeah, fight between yourselves. They have the reflecting thing. Oh god, let me out. But at least I can hit them without them reflecting my uh, mace back at me. That would be snide. I think it just continues burning them. I think also it has infinite range. <sighs> well, that was 20 minutes, so I'll get back to this stage, and I'll see you at the start of the next episode. Thank you for watching, and I'll see you then.